life inside an ant colony, Myrmecocystis placidops. This species is found mainly in the southwestern United States with the northernmost ranges being California and Utah and going southern into Mexico. The most important member of a placidops colony is going to be the queen. She will lay the eggs that will eventually give rise to every worker that will ever live in this colony. And without her, the colony will never grow. Next, in terms of importance, it's going to be the brood. As you can see here, this is the first stage, which is the eggs. The eggs will soon hatch into larvae. After the larva stage comes the pupa stage. This is the final stage right before a brand new worker is born into the colony. The early stages of the brood are usually clumped together and put in the most secure location. Whereas the pupa will always be kept at the warmest part of the nest to help speed up the final stages of development. Finally, when the callow worker is ready to emerge, her sisters will help release her from the cocoon. Once an egg hatches into a larva, it's going to need two things to develop, and that's going to be heat and protein. The worker ants from within the colony will go outside the nest to collect protein or get it from a cache within the nest. Once the workers have brought the protein inside the nest, they will all help try to process it into the smallest bits possible for the larva to digest. With small insects such as these fruit flies, oftentimes the workers will just bring the entire fruit fly and give it right to the hungry larva. Myrmecocystis have some of the most active larva in all of North American ants. Once the larva has received enough protein to reach a proper development stage, the workers will begin burying it with sand. This is where the larva will begin to spin its cocoon. Another very important member of the Placodops colony is going to be a replete. This is a worker who is gorged with food to act as a food store in times of famine. Workers that forage outside the nest will bring liquid nectar to these repletes and fill them for later use. In times of need, the workers within the colony will gather resources from the repletes and distribute them to the other hungry workers. For these ants, you're going to want to have a heat gradient within the nest between 82 and 86 degrees Fahrenheit on the hot side and 72 to 75 on the cool side. This will allow the workers to move the brood around into warmer areas as they progress and more humid areas during the early stages of development and do not heat the entire nest. For a carb source, I use sugar water mixture, three parts water, one part sugar, and a pinch of salt. Use all organic ingredients if possible. If using food coloring, make sure it's organic and use the smallest amount possible. Now for proteins, you're going to want to use crickets, mealworms, pet store purchased cockroaches, or fruit flies. Best to raise your own, but if not, make sure to purchase from a trusted source. Never feed insects around your home. Most importantly, don't overthink and stay consistent. Avoid unnecessary nest moves, and have fun and learn as much as you can along the way. Thanks for watching.